Hi, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, as always, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reading a Finnish folktale titled The Forest Bride. This version of the story comes from the book Mighty Mikko, a book of Finnish fairy tales and folktales by Parker Fillmore, published in 1922. So sit back, relax, and let me whisk you away to the magical world of Finnish fairy tales. There was once a farmer who had three sons. One day, when the boys were grown to manhood, he said to them, My sons, it is high time that you all were married. Tomorrow I wish you to go out in search of brides. But where shall we go? The oldest son asked. I have thought of that too, the father said. Do each of you chop down a tree, and then take the direction in which the fallen tree points. I'm sure that each of you, if you go far enough in that direction, will find a suitable bride. So the next day, the three sons chopped down trees. The oldest son's tree fell, pointing north. That suits me, he said, for he knew to the north lay a farm where a very pretty girl lived. The tree of the second son, when it fell, pointed south. Well, that suits me, the second son declared thinking of a girl that he had often danced with, who lived on a farm to the south. The youngest son's tree, the youngest's name was Veiko, when it fell, pointed straight to the forest. <laughs> the older brothers laughed. Veiko will have to go courting one of the wolf girls, or one of the foxes. They meant by this that only animals lived in the forest, and they thought they were making a good joke at Veiko's expense. But Veiko said that he was perfectly willing to take his chances and go where the tree pointed. The older brothers went off gaily and presented their suits to the two farmers whose daughters they admired. Veiko, too started off with brave front, but after he had gone some distance, his courage began to ebb. How can I find a bride, he asked himself, in a place where there are no human creatures at all? And just then he came to a little hut, and he pushed open the door and went in. It was empty. To be sure, there was a little mouse sitting on the table, daintily combing her whiskers. But a mouse, of course, doesn't count. There's nobody here, Veiko said aloud. The little mouse paused in her toilet and, turning towards him, said reproachfully, Why, Veiko, I'm here. But you don't count. You're only a mouse. Of course I can't the little mouse declared. But tell me, what were you hoping to find? Well, I was hoping to find a sweetheart. The little mouse questioned him further, and Veiko told the whole story of his brothers and the trees. The two older ones are finding sweethearts easily enough, Veiko said. But I don't see how I can off here in the forest and it will shame me to have to go home and confess that I alone have failed. See here, Veiko, the little mouse said. Why don't you take me for your sweetheart? Veiko laughed heartily. But you're only a mouse. Who ever heard of a man having a mouse for a sweetheart? The mouse shook her head solemnly. Take my word for it, Veiko. You could do much worse than have me for a sweetheart. Even if I am only a mouse, 
I can love you and be true to you. She was a dear, dainty little mouse, and as she sat looking up at Veiko with her little paws under her chin and her bright little eyes sparkling, Veiko liked her more and more. Then she sang Veiko a pretty little song, and the song cheered him so much that he forgot his disappointment at not finding a human sweetheart. And as he left her to go home, he said, Very well, little mouse, I'll take you for my sweetheart. At that, the mouse made little squeaks of delight, and she told him that she'd be true to him and wait for him no matter how long he was in returning. Well, the older brothers, when they got home, boasted loudly about their sweetheart. Mine, said the oldest, has the rosiest cheeks you ever saw. And mine, the second announced, has long yellow hair. Veiko said nothing. What's the matter, Veiko? the older brothers asked him, laughing. Has your sweetheart pretty pointed ears or sharp white teeth? You see, they were still having their little joke about foxes and wolves. You needn't laugh, Veiko said. I have found a sweetheart. She's a gentle, dainty little thing, gowned in velvet. Gowned in velvet, echoed the oldest brother with a frown. Just like a princess, the second brother sneered. Yes. Veiko repeated, gowned in velvet like a princess, and when she sits up and sings to me, I'm perfectly happy. Huh, grunted the older brothers, not at all pleased that Veiko should have so grand a sweetheart. Well, said the old farmer after a few days, now I should like to know what those sweethearts of yours are able to do. Have them each bake me a loaf of bread, so that I can see whether they're good housewives. Mine will be able to bake bread, I'm sure of that, said the oldest boastfully. And so will mine, chorused the second brother. Veiko was silent. What about the princess, they said with a laugh. Do you think the princess can bake bread? Well, I don't know, Veiko answered truthfully. I'll have to ask her. Of course, he had no reason for supposing that the little mouse could bake bread, and by the time he reached the hut in the forest, he was feeling sad and discouraged. When he pushed open the door, he found the little mouse, as before, seated on the table, daintily combing her whiskers. At the sight of Veiko, she danced about with delight. I'm so glad to see you, she squeaked. I knew you would come back. Then, when she noticed that he was silent, she asked him what was the matter, and Veiko told her. My father wants our sweethearts to bake him a loaf of bread. If I come home without a loaf, my brothers will laugh at me. You won't have to go home without a loaf, the little mouse said. I can bake bread. Veiko was much surprised at this. I've never heard of a mouse that could bake bread. Well, I can, the little mouse insisted. With that, she began ringing a small silver bell. Instantly, there was the sound of hurrying footsteps, tiny, scratchy footsteps, and hundreds of mice came running into the hut. The little princess mouse, sitting up very straight and dignified, said to them, Each of you go and fetch me a grain of the finest wheat. All of the mice scampered quickly away, and soon returned, one by one, each carrying a grain of the finest wheat. After that, it was no trick at all for the princess mouse to bake a beautiful loaf of wheaten bread. 
The next day, the three brothers presented their father the loaves of their sweetheart's baking. The oldest one had a loaf of rye bread. Hmm, very good, the farmer said. For hard-working people like us, rye bread is good. The loaf the second son had was made of barley. Barley bread is also good, the farmer said. But when Veiko presented his loaf of beautiful wheaten bread, his father cried out, What? White bread? Oh, Veiko! Now must have a sweetheart of wealth. Of course, the older brothers sneered. Didn't he tell us that she was a princess? Say, Veiko, when a princess wants fine white flour, how does she get it? Veiko answered simply. Well, she rings a little silver bell, and when her servants come in, she tells them to bring her grains of the finest wheat. At this, the older brothers nearly exploded with envy, until their father had to reprove them. There, there, he said. Don't grudge the boy his good luck. Each girl has baked the loaf she knows how to make, and each in her own way will probably make a good wife. But before you bring them home, I want one further test of their skill in housewifery. Let them send me a sample of their weaving. The older brothers were delighted at this, for they knew that their sweethearts were skillful weavers. We'll see how her ladyship fares this time, they said, sure in their hearts that Veiko's sweetheart, whoever she was, would not put them to shame with her weaving. Veiko, too, had serious doubts of the little mouse's ability at the loom. Who ever heard of a mouse that could weave? He said to himself as he pushed open the door of the little hut. Oh, there you are at last, the little mouse squeaked joyfully. She reached out her little paws in welcome, and then in her excitement she began dancing around the table. Are you really glad to see me, little mouse? Veiko asked. Indeed I am, the mouse declared. Am I not your sweetheart? I've been waiting for you and waiting, just wishing that you would return. Does your father want something more this time, Veiko? Yes, and it's something I'm afraid you can't give me, little mouse. Perhaps I can. Tell me what it is. Well, it's a sample of your weaving. I don't believe you can weave. I've never heard of a mouse that could weave. Tut, tut, said the mouse. Of course I can weave. It would be a strange thing if Veiko's sweetheart couldn't weave. She rang again the silver little bell. And instantly there was the faint of a hundred little mice feet running in from all directions, and they sat up on their haunches, awaiting the princess's orders. Go, each of you, she said, and get me a fibre of flax, the finest that there is. The mice went scurrying off, and soon they began returning, one by one, each bringing a fibre of flax. When they had spun the flax and carded it, the little mouse wove a beautiful piece of fine linen. It was so sheer that she was able, when she folded it, to put it into an empty nutshell. Here, Veiko, she said. In this little box is a sample of my weaving. I hope your father will like it. Veiko, when he got home, felt almost embarrassed for he was sure his sweetheart's weaving would shame his brothers. So at first he kept the nutshell hidden in his pocket. The sweetheart of the oldest brother had sent a sample of her weaving, a square of coarse cotton. Mm, not very fine, the farmer said. 
but good enough. The second brother's sample was a square of cotton and linen mixed. Mm, a little better, the farmer said, nodding his head. And he then turned to Veiko. And you, Veiko, has your sweetheart not given you a sample of her weaving? Veiko handed his father a nutshell, a sight which left his brothers bursting out laughing. <laughs> Veiko's sweetheart gives him a nut when he asks for a sample of her weaving. <laughs> but their laughter died as the farmer opened the nutshell and began shaking out a great web of the finest linen. Why, Vega, my boy, he cried. However did your sweetheart get threads so fine for a web? Vega answered modestly. She rang a little silver bell and ordered her servants to bring her in fibres of the finest flax. They did so, and after they had spun the flax and carded it, my sweetheart wove the web you see. Wonderful, gasped the farmer. I have never known such a weaver. The other girls will be all right for farmer's wives, but Veiko's sweetheart might be a princess. Well, concluded the farmer, it's time that you all brought your sweethearts home. I want to see them with my own eyes. Suppose you bring them tomorrow. She's a good little mouse, and I'm very fond of her, Vaco thought to himself as he went to the forest. But my brothers will certainly laugh when they find that she is only a mouse. Well, I don't care if they do laugh. She's been a good little sweetheart to me, and I'm not going to be ashamed of her. So when he got to the hut, he told the little mouse at once that his father wanted to see her. The little mouse was greatly excited. I must go in proper style, she said. She rang the little silver bell and ordered her coach and five. The coach, when it came, turned out to be an empty nutshell, and the five prancing steeds that were drawing it were five black mice. The little mouse seated herself in the coach, with a coachman mouse on the front, and a footman mouse in the box behind her. Oh, how my brothers will laugh, thought Veiko. But he didn't laugh. He walked beside the coach, and told the little mouse not to be frightened, that he would take good care of her. His father, he told her, was a gentle old man, and would be kind to her. When they left the forest, they came to the river that was spanned by a footbridge. And just as Veiko and the nutshell coach reached the middle of the bridge, a man met them coming from the opposite direction. Mercy me, the man exclaimed as he caught sight of the strange little coach that was rolling along past Veiko. What is that? He stooped down and looked and then, with a loud laugh, he put his foot and pushed the coach. The little mouse, her servants, and her five prancing steeds, all off the bridge and into the water below. What have you done? What have you done? Veiko cried. You've drowned my poor little sweetheart. The man, thinking Veiko was crazy, hurried away. Veiko, with tears in his eyes, looked down into the water. You poor little mouse, he said. How sorry I am that you are drowned. You were a faithful, loving sweetheart, and now that you're gone, I know how much I loved you. As he spoke, he saw a beautiful coach of gold drawn by five glossy horses go up the far bank of the river. A coachman in gold lace held the reins, and a footman in a pointed cap sat stiffly behind. 
the most beautiful girl in the world, was seated in the coach. Her skin was as red as a berry and as white as snow. Her long golden hair gleamed with jewels, and she was dressed in pearly velvet. She beckoned to Veiko, and when he came close, she said, Won't you come sit beside me? 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 Veiko stammered, too dazed to think. The beautiful creature smiled. You were not ashamed to have me for a sweetheart when I was a mouse, she said. And surely now that I am a princess, you won't desert me. A mouse? Veiko gasped. Were you the little mouse? The princess nodded. Yes, I was the little mouse under an evil enchantment which could never have been broken if you had not taken me for a sweetheart and if another human being had not drowned me. Now the enchantment is broken forever. So come, we will go to your father and after he has given us his blessing we will get married and go home to my kingdom. And that is exactly what they did. They drove at once to the farmer's house, and when Veko's father and his brothers and his brother's sweethearts saw the princess's coach stopping at their gate, they all came out, bowing and scraping, to see what grand folk could want of them. Father, Veko cried, don't you know me? The father stopped bowing long enough to look up. Why, bless my soul, he cried. It's our Veiko. Yes, father, I am Veiko, and this is the princess that I'm going to marry. A princess, did you say, Veiko? Mercy me, where did my boy find a princess? out in the forest where my tree had pointed. Well, 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 the farmer said, where your tree pointed. I've always heard that was a good way to find a bride. The older brothers shook their heads gloomily and muttered, just our luck. If only our trees had pointed to the forest too, we should have found princesses instead of plain country wenches. But they were wrong. It wasn't because his tree pointed to the forest that Veiko had gotten a princess. It was because he was so simple and good that he was kind, even to a little mouse. Well, after they had got the farmer's blessing, they rode home to the princess's kingdom, and they were married and they were happy as they should have been, for they were good and true to each other, and they loved each other dearly. I'd like to take a moment to say a big thank you to the members of the channel, as well as my patrons on Patreon, for supporting my work. Folklore and fairy tales play such a big part in my life, and I love being able to share them here with you. If you're interested in finding out more about channel membership, you can find all the information here, or in the link in the video description. Or you can head over to my Patreon page. You can find the link in the description of this video, or on my YouTube homepage. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to the members of the channel and my patrons for your support. But for now, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.